smile. All right. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm Superintendent Perry, and thank you for coming to our open house around our school attendance area adjustments. Buenas noches. Ella es la Superintendente Perry y les queremos dar la bienvenida a la conversación acerca de los límites escolares que hemos estado haciendo durante los uh, últimos meses. I want to recognize a few people here tonight. Uh, first of all, we have a member of our school board, Director Kylo. And then we have some task force members here tonight. If you're on the Boundary Adjustment Task Force, would you raise your hand? We uh, need to thank these people for their work. They have been working for two months now um, to get to the place that we are tonight. Mm -hmm. And they also have stickers, um, and they are going to be key people later in the night to find so they can work with us at the map. So just please remember their faces and then remember that they also have some red stickers. Um, la superintendente nos estaba diciendo también que tenemos unos miembros muy importantes del equipo aquí. Primero que todo el director Kylo, que es uno de nuestros miembros de la junta directiva. Director Kylo, please wave. Right there, thank you so much. Um, and he has been involved in this work. El estado muy uh, um, involucrado en este trabajo. Y también tenemos miembros del equipo que ha estado trabajando en estas decisiones y son las personas que levantaron su mano. Task force members, can you please raise your hands again? Ellos son los miembros del equipo y ellos tienen unos unas calcomanías rojas como la que tengo yo puesta que se me está cayendo. Y um, ellos van a ser personas claves para que luego nos vayan a explicar los mapas en los que vamos a trabajar más tarde. All right, with that, I will introduce you to your two presenters tonight. We have Yadira, a member of our uh, task force, and then we also have Olga, who is a district uh, personnel. She's one of our elementary directors. And with that, I would like to just turn it over to them. Thank you. Um, la superintendente también quería presentar a los, las dos presentadoras de hoy, y una de ellas es Yadira Juárez, y Yadira es de la coalición Um, y uh, también es una miembro del, del equipo de trabajo que hizo estas revisiones escolares. Y mi nombre es Olga Cobb y también soy empleada del distrito. Soy una de las directoras de las, uh, de las escuelas primarias y también participé en este trabajo de revisión de los mapas. Bienvenidos. Right. Thank you so much, Superintendent. Um, buenas noches. It's great to have all of you here. Um, today we have. Um, three key goals. Number one is tell you a little bit about the process that, that um, uh, people worked on to make these changes for the district. The second goal is to um, help you understand what changes are happening for our schools and how those changes impact you and your students. And then our third goal is to get your feedback. This is getting to a, a place where we're thinking we're at the uh, changes that we need to make, but we still need your feedback and we have used your feedback all the way through. So tonight is really important um, that you fill in some of those blue papers with questions or with um, uh, suggestions. If you, if you can uh, leave those with us, those, they will be really helpful. The task force members are reading every single piece of feedback so that we can consider the community's voice in these changes. <laughs> Bienvenidos a todos. Estamos aquí por tres metas importantes y también tienen en sus manos un documento color azul en el cual nosotros les estamos pidiendo que por favor lo llenen con sus preguntas que tengan, con sugerencias para poder hacer este trabajo y tenga un éxito. Gracias. También les queremos uh, explicar el documento que tienen en sus manos y este documento en la primera página. So let me say that in English first. And I'm going to need your help to remind me. Go back and forth or just English, Olga. Um, the document that you guys have in front of you is, or that I hope you all have in your hands, um, is a document that is going to guide us through some of these changes. The first one is just a visual of all the schools that go to a specific feeder area. So um, the bottom uh, little houses there are the elementary schools that go into the bigger houses that are the middle schools that go into the big high school, the green um, house in, um, at the top. 
Um, we have all feeder systems in here represented in this page, but we want you to know that tonight we're going to focus on North and Mackay, and those are the maps we're going to review at the end of the evening. But we also brought the other areas, so we have South and Sprague um, and Kaiser, so you can also see just for your information if you want to spend a little bit of time at the end of the night doing that. Lo que vamos a estar haciendo esta noche en su paquete, tienen un paquete donde la primera página que están mirando hay unos triángulos, en esos triángulos están representando las casitas, dentro de los triángulos hay unas casitas pequeñas color azules, esas casitas son las representaciones de las escuelas primarias de aquí del, um, de Salem Kaiser y después tenemos las otras casas medianas que vienen en color como azulito, verdecito bajo. Esas están representando las escuelas secundarias de aquí del distrito. Y la casa más grande que está hasta arriba, esa es la que está representando las escuelas preparatorias. Y hoy esta noche nos vamos a estar enfocando solamente en la escuela preparatoria La McKay y la... Norte. Norte, y la del norte, solamente. Tenemos mapas también donde para ustedes eh, puedan observarlos, son las otras escuelas pre preparatorias que traemos, como la de Spray, la de South y... Um, Uh, y Kaiser, todas las escuelas preparatorias están de ese lado solamente para que ustedes vayan y observen, pero las dos primeras nos vamos a estar enfocando esta noche. Let's go to the back page, and in there you can see a chart with um, elementary, middle, and high school, and all of our schools are there, so you can find Four Corners, Miller, Marier, Chavez, all the schools that we'll be talking about today, and you'll know which middle school they will go to, which high school they will go to. If there was a change, it will say boundary change, yes or no. And if we change the feeder system, what that means is, did your child before go to maybe north, and now with this change, they'll be going to South High School. Um, I want to point out some big changes. Um, uh, for schools like Battle Creek, I'll just give you an example. Battle Creek is a school out south. They had a split where their students had to go to two different middle schools. And through this work, we were trying to remove some of those splits, and so that school will only go to one middle school and then one high school. So those are the types of changes that you will be able to see in the second page. ¿Quieres que digas en español o no? ¿Sí? ¿Segura? Ok. So, la segunda página es um, una página en la que ustedes ven unos cuadros en los que están representados las escuelas primarias, las escuelas de intermedio y las escuelas de prepa en donde los niños van a ir y ahí les estamos diciendo si vamos a tener algunos cambios acerca de lo que vamos a, eh, que son los cambios de los que vamos a estar hablando hoy. Um, eso se los podemos explicar mejor a medida que va pasando la noche, pero quería guiarlos uh, para que vean esa página. Um, if we go to the third page, you'll see McKay High School feeder area. And again, we see at the top that little graphic that represents all of the schools. And the charts that we have in there are telling us first the name of the school and then what is the existing situation. And you'll see at the top of each of those columns in 2017. So let's go to Cesar Chavez so I can explain how these, how we're going to read through these uh, charts. Cesar Chavez right now has 530 students by residence. In 2022, we have 562, a calculation of 562. That means that the school will be at a 107% capacity with students over capacity, about 37 students over what we hope to have. Um, in 2027, and that is in 2022. In 2027, we're going to have 558. There's some growth in that area. And it puts the school at a 106 capacity and then 33 students over. So the the what we found is we had to make some changes to open up some space and have students be in classrooms that were supportive of their learning. And 
in the right side of the page, you'll see the task force proposal, where it says task force proposal four. That means those are the changes that the task force has worked, have worked on to try to uh, support the schools that are at over capacity. So let's go back to the Chavez example, 545 in 2017, and then in 2022, they, they were able to make changes and that puts them below 14, and then in 2027, they're gonna be below 16. Right, that helps us a little bit, but we're gonna go in depth into these charts and then take you to the maps to explain these a little better. Okay, I just wanted to explain a little bit what you have in your hands. Lo que es en su, ter en su tercera página, estamos con la Escuela McKay, y en la Escuela McKay vamos a darles lo que es un ejemplo uh, de César Chávez. Por ejemplo, en César Chávez dice que en el 2017, actualmente ahorita, tenemos 530 estudiantes. Para el 2022 se está prediciendo que va a haber 562 a estudiantes, eso quiere decir que va a haber con una capacidad de 100, 107%. Quiere decir que vamos a tener más estudiantes, un 37 más eh, número de estudiantes en esta escuela. Lo que está haciendo el trabajo de, uh, de las, eh, del el equipo de trabajo acerca de las limitaciones de los uh, límites escolares, lo que estamos haciendo ahorita, que por ejemplo, en el año 2017 vamos a tener 545 estudiantes en escuelas. César Chávez, pero para el 2022, con este trabajo, esta propuesta, vamos a tener 511. Quiere decir que vamos a tener el 97% a punto 3 de capacidad. Ya se redujo a un menos 16. Ese es uno de los ejemplos que estamos dando, pero más adelante, cuando vayamos a los mapas, ahí se les va a explicar con mucho más detalle. So a lot of people have asked, why do we have to look into these? Why do we have to change boundaries? And the reality is that we are a growing district, that we have schools that have a lot of kids in their classroom and they are still coming and we want them to come, but we also wanna give them the space that is appropriate for their learning. So we need to look into making some of these changes to be able to offer the best uh, services that we can to our students. Um, when we started this work, the superintendent said, Superintendent Perry gave us some guidelines and said, I need your work to be following these, these parameters that I'm giving you. And so this has been our charge for the team, for all the 50 people that have been participating in this work. This has been our, our charge, our order from our superintendent. And that is that we need to create a balance between high school attendance feeder areas. We had some high schools, we have some high schools that are overcrowded and we needed to support students in those high schools. Um, we needed to align future student populations with future school capacities. We needed to look in the future and I'll tell you how we did that. Um, we needed to identify implications for the 2018 bond program. There is an incredible opportunity. You voted and we passed an amazing support for schools and for students and so we now have to ask ourselves what can we do to utilize those funding in the best way and support the schools. Um, the superintendent also said, I want you to engage community members of underserved, diverse, or marginalized uh, individuals and groups. I want all voices participating in this process. And then also that uh, we need to present recommendations to the superintendent in January and then to the school board so they can uh, review all of the changes and then make final decisions. Ok, eh, lo que estamos haciendo es, ¿por qué estamos haciendo este tipo de trabajo, eh, este grupo, más de 50 personas que están en este comité? Lo que queremos es de que el distrito tenga para nuestros estudiantes un, un espacio que sea agra eh, eh, agradable para los estudiantes y también que sea cómodo para nuestros estudiantes, que no esté sobresaturada las escuelas. Ahorita, por ejemplo, eh, estuvimos utilizando criterios que la superintendente nos dijo que teníamos que alinearnos en estos criterios. Uno de esos es generalizar el equilibrio entre la población de estudiantes de sistemas asignado, asignados de cada escuela basado en la debilitación de escolar. También adaptar la población estudiantil futura con la capacidad escolar. 
identificar las simplificaciones del programa del bono, que gracias a ustedes eh, se pasó este bono y ahora se va a utilizar para hacer estos cambios. También eh, necesitamos fomentar int intencionalmente la participación de los miembros. Quiere decir que también hay miembros de la comunidad que son partes de este comité personal uh, y también son eh, diversos este eh, grupo de uh, del bono, del, uh, este, este comité que tenemos de límites escolares. También esta, esta propuesta la tenemos que presentar a la superintendente para, um, para la mesa directiva. Se tiene que hacer esta propuesta para la mesa directiva y tenemos la fecha que va a ser para enero. Entonces, y también las decisiones no las vamos a tomar nosotros, sino ya se van a tomar en la mesa directiva cuando se lleve la propuesta de trabajo que está haciendo los límites. Ok. So, Again, let's talk about some of those uh, guiding principles uh, that we took in consideration in doing this work. We needed to allow adequate, uh, allow adequate room for required programs and anticipated growth within each school capacity and throughout the district. We needed to ensure access to equitable educational opportunities. We need to give each student exactly what they need. Um, we need to ensure safety to and from school. We wanted to um, con continue protecting neighborhood schools. We want kids to walk to school if, as much as possible. Um, provide continuity in school assignments for students, families, and schools. Ensure affected or impacted community members were involved in the process and represent ethnic and socioeconomic diversity. And then we consider the impact to establish neighborhoods. So um, I wanted to tell you about some of these numbers and where they came from. There's uh, Rachel, Rachel, right here. And Rachel belongs to a team um, of a company called Flow Analytics, and they have this incredible connection with um, a, a lot of data resources that were able to tell us where there was going to be construction in five years, or what was the census indicating about growth of kids in Northeast Salem. And so the team will tell you that we were able to zoom in literally in their computer through their system and figure out how many kids are in this area, in this specific neighborhood in 2017, and how many kids do they project with the best uh, resources they have right now and the best technology they have right now available to them, how many kids are going to be in that same area in 2022. So um, the district really did a, a, a great job recruiting an, a team of experts that could help us do this work. También queremos dejarles saber de dónde están saliendo todos estos números. Todos estos números vienen de, de personas profesionales que se llama Flow, es una, uh, son, es, esta um, Raquel o Rachel, uh, ella es la que se encarga con toda la base de datos. Ella tiene todos estos números basado a los estudios. Ella puede hacer, pre, eh, pueden hacer predicciones, como por ejemplo en el mapa, las, nos acercamos más a una área y ella nos puede decir cuántos estudiantes están viviendo en esa área. También con esos números, ellos nos pueden decir las predicciones que hay para el 2022 o en el 2000 más para adelante, nos van a decir cuántos estudiantes más van a vivir en esa área. Entonces, es de ahí donde nosotros sacamos eso, eh, nos, nosotros, ellos sacan esos números para las predicciones. Muchas gracias por todo el trabajo que hacen junto con el Distrito Escolar. También tenemos que, criterios en los que se están trabajando, es facilitar el espacio adecuado para los programas que lo requieren, así como para la matrícula futura en cada escuela como en todo el distrito. Garantizar el acceso a oportunidades educativas equitativas. Garantizar la seguridad hacia y desde la escuela. Proporcionar continuidad en las asignaciones escolares para los estudiantes, familias y escuelas. Garantizar que el cambio apoye la diversidad étnica y socioeconómica. Considerar el impacto a los vecindarios establecidos. We also did all this work with an equity focus. 
That meant that we were not going to make the same decision for all schools. We were not going to say, this is the change we're going to make for everybody. We were really going to consider what is it that is needed, needed in this specific area and how can we respond so the kids that need additional supports get those additional supports. So um, through that, we said we are going to intentionally ask ourselves throughout the work of the task force whether we are making decisions in the best interest of students that are underserved or diverse or marginalized in their families. Um, and then we continued asking ourselves, do we fully understand the impacts of these recommendations? So when we're saying this community is going to go from school A to school C, are we considering all the factors? Can the parents really take the school, the kids maybe after school to play sports at that school C? All of those things were part of the conversation. Uh, because we know we're impacting people's lives and, and kids' um, uh, relationships with schools. Um, how, do we re how do the recommendations create more equitable outcomes for our students? How do we make sure that we're giving each student exactly what they need? And then how we created unintended, have we created unintended negative consequences? And if so, how can we how can we mitigate those? How can we solve them? So if one of these changes caused something that we were not expecting in a specific community, what are we going to do to resolve it? Um, this was a, a key part of the work and something that we came back to every time uh, there was a decision. Lo que estamos también trabajando es el, el ente de equidad. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que también tenemos algunas cosas que vamos a estar tomando en cuenta. Una de esas es, intencionalmente, nos estamos preguntando, el equipo del comité se está preguntando a sí mismo, intencionalmente preguntémonos a nosotros mismos durante el trabajo del grupo a cargo de delimitación escolar, si estamos tomando decisiones en el mejor interés de los estudiantes y las familias que pudieran ser mayormente impactadas. Quiere decir que si nosotros estamos entendiendo plenamente la necesidad y las recomendaciones que nos está dando la comunidad cómo las recomendaciones pudiesen generar resultados más equitativos para nuestros estudiantes. Hemos creado consecuencias negativas, impre imprevistas y de ser así, ¿cómo podemos responder a estas necesidades? No nada más se va a tomar la decisión de decir, ¿sabes qué? Vamos a tomar esta escuela y se va a mover de la escuela A hasta la escuela C. No, necesitamos ver qué es, cuáles son las necesidades de esa comunidad y de esa escuela para poder tomar estas decisiones. So let's look at this picture, uh, and this picture was something that we reviewed again as a team. Um, in the top, we're talking about equality. We are giving, we have four different people there with four different needs, right? They need to get somewhere, they need a transportation uh, tool. And in that first uh, half of the picture, we gave them each the same bike the exact same bike, right? So if you think of our example of the schools, this is if we say every school will be the same size, will have the same amount of teachers, will have the same amount of teachers that are bilingual, same amount of teachers that are uh, ESOL endorsed, one principal, right? At the bottom, we're thinking about equity. We are really responding to different needs in giving people exactly what they needed for that transportation need in this example. So the, the little guy got a bike that was more his size and the lady got a bike that was the same that we, want, we wanted to give from the beginning. This uh, dad or this man that is pretty tall, we gave him a bike that was tall enough for him. And then the other person that had additional needs, we gave them something that worked for them. So really, this is what we wanted to do while we were thinking about making changes for our district. We wanted to make sure that we were thinking about our kids and all of our kids are different and all of our kids have different needs and our schools have different needs and we needed to be um, thinking responsibly about that. 
Este es un excelente ejemplo que nos está mostrando aquí estas bicicletas con las personas. La primera es la igualdad, ¿verdad? Nos están dando a todos algo que estamos necesitando para podernos transportar. No importa eh, que sea alto, que sea bajito, nos están dando una bicicleta a cada uno de nosotros arriba. Pero también nosotros queremos lo que es la equidad. Queremos, ¿Qué es la equidad? Es lo que está representando la fotografía abajo. Quiere decir que dependiendo de las necesidades, se le va a dar la herramienta al estudiante. Quiere decir, por ejemplo, que el, allá está alguien más bajito, pues se le da la bicicleta a, a la estatura de él, ¿verdad? La persona que está en, en medio, está más alto, pues se le da una bicicleta para que él se pueda ajustar a ella. Es lo que estamos haciendo nosotros en el Comité de Límites Escolares, trabajando mucho lo que es la equidad y la igualdad. So now let's talk about the process. We started in January, or the team started in January, and from January through August of last year, they were, uh, there were some internal staff members that were connecting with Flo, again with Rachel and her team, and were telling them, here's our goal, and this is what, this is the need of the district. This is our current situation, we can't continue it, we need changes, help us through those changes. Then um, there was a proposal that they came up with that they needed to then present to a task force that was put together from September to December, and that is this group of 50 people from our community that represent parents and um, uh, community members that don't have kids in the schools, a lot of uh, uh, um, people from businesses, um, some staff members that came together to work in this process. Then uh, we did a parent or guardian survey to hear from the community their opinions. Um, we um, went out and asked the community for their opinion. So we had another uh, one of these meetings. And then we have our last meeting scheduled right now is December 11th. Um, January 19th, we're gonna have a co-chair presentation on the 15th. Um, and then in February through March of 19, we're gonna have the board approval for fall of 19 implementation. So some of these changes can start as soon as fall of 2019. Ahora sí, vamos a pasar lo que es el proceso de revisión. Eh, esto quiere decir que este trabajo se, se comenzó desde enero del año pasado hasta agosto y, es, y iniciaron con eh, el personal y todo el equipo de Flow, todo lo, lo análisis, toda la base de datos que estuvieron ellos obteniendo. Después se vino lo que fue la propuesta inicial. Después de eso, en septiembre a diciembre de este año escolar, es, el trabajo se realizó por grupo. Se hizo lo que es el Comité de Límites Escolares, más de 50 personas están participando, entre esos están representantes de la comunidad, hay padres de familia, también tenemos personal del distrito escolar que está participando en este comité. El 11 de diciembre vamos a tener lo que es la otra junta eh, con el comité para hacer, eh, el, para continuar con el trabajo. En enero del 2019 ya se tiene que presentar a los copresidentes eh, lo que es ya la última propuesta, la finalizada, lo que ya el, el comité estuvo trabajando se va a proponer y eso va a ser para el 15 de enero. Finalmente, de febrero a marzo... Eh, ya tiene que aprobarlo la mesa directiva, todos los miembros de la mesa directiva van a aprobar este trabajo y quiere decir que se va a empezar a implementar lo más pronto posible, que sería este año escolar, 2018-2019. So let's talk about the uh, proposed changes. Um, we started, again, as you see in the graphic, our elementary schools are the building blocks of the whole system. So we needed to figure out how many elementary schools going into middle school, how many kids and how many kids are projected in 2022 and in 2027, again, with the help of flow analytics. And, and through that, we th made some changes that we're gonna see in the maps and that you can also see in your papers. Then we'll go into the maps. Okay. Ahora sí vamos a ir lo que es a los mapas. Eh, vamos a estar viendo lo que son las escuelas primarias como los elementos fundamentales. Esas van a ser una de las bases en las cuales nosotros estamos trabajando. En su, en su primera página van a ver todas las casitas azules, esas son las escuelas elementales. Después va, se va a ver lo que es el impacto en las escuelas y en el sistema de asignación de la escuela basado en la delimitación escolar. 
Y por último, vamos a tener lo que son los materiales y los recursos. Okay. So, I don't, I'm not going to go over this chart, but this is the same information that you have in front of you. And I want to encourage you, when we are working at the maps, please ask task force members for help in um, uh, understanding the, the, the information that you have in your hands. We also have some district staff members. We have principals. We have um, um, people from, faci from facilities that understand what is happening. And so please also, uh, you'll find some of your principals here. I see uh, el, el director Decker, la directora Valencia, and other principals, Mrs. Cochrane and Mrs. Mata, and then another director, Mrs. Litchfield. Can you guys wave any staff members, Salem Kaiser staff members? They will be sense makers also um, of the information. Oh, and then Lillian, our director of communication is here too, and she can also be a sense maker. maker. Fueron muchos nombres, no me los memoricé, yeah. pero uh, lo que vamos a hacer es, en su paquete está esta tabla que acaba de mostrar ahorita Olga, no la vamos a revisar detalladamente ahorita, eh, porque son muchos números los que están, pero lo que vamos a hacer es de que hay personas que tenemos la calcomanía, ya se me cayó, que tenemos la calcomanía que somos representantes del Comité de Límites Escolares, por favor, hagan las preguntas, hagan, den sugerencias, vamos a estar caminando también no nada más nosotros estamos, eh, hay personal del distrito escolar, tenemos a los directores, tenemos también personal de las oficinas principales del distrito escolar, ah, vamos a estar caminando, hagan preguntas por favor y sugerencias, dudas que tengan, ahorita es el buen momento. Ok, so let me briefly tell you about the maps. The maps we have in, and, and again, I'm not pretending for you to understand them or, or be able to see them here, but because we're going to go see them closely at the wall. But um, you'll see in the maps an area that is shaded or with a line across. In that area, you'll have a label that says that area went from Cesar Chavez to Auburn Elementary, right? Again, it looks like a big area, but when we looked in and when we zoomed in, these are maybe 15 students. And there are other areas that are really, really small, but when we zoomed in, if it's an apartment complex, it could be 200 students. So I want you guys to consider that and we will answer those questions as we look through the areas. And I'm kind of making this up because I don't really know what the streets are in here, but that is, that is just an example to help us understand. Um, we did look at the projection, we did look at the students that are already in that area, and then the projection of 22 and 27. Um, again, we have these labels that tell you where students move, so from Mary Air to Miller, then from Air to Miller, but also we needed to relieve Miller. So there were some moves that happened um, to Miller and something I have to tell you too. When you look at the chart right now, you'll see that Miller has an overcapacity number, right? So that is something that needs to go to the review committee and that needs to go also to the bond team because it means that we need to do something for Miller so that they can have space and enough classrooms to be able to build the school up. So all of those conversations that happen in this boundary task force will impact conversations that are happening at the boundary, I'm sorry, at the bond uh, task force, right? If we're gonna have more kids in one school, we need to build up that school and provide more classrooms. ¿Quieres que lo diga en español? Ok. Um, entonces, la última cosa que les queríamos decir antes de que los invitemos a mirar los mapas es que este es un ejemplo de los mapas que les tenemos para mostrar. Um, estos mapas les pueden indicar los cambios que hemos hecho. Por ejemplo, este cuadrito pequeño que está aquí dice de Mary Air se fueron para Miller. De allí los otros niños se fueron de Mary Air para Miller también. Y en este momento, la escuela Miller, si ustedes miran, la escuela Miller en el, en el 2027 va a estar por encima de capacidad, más o menos 130 niños por encima. Entonces, eso lo tenemos que solucionar. Y lo que significa es que esto tiene que volver otra vez al comité 
y el comité también tiene que comunicarse directamente con la persona, con las personas que están haciendo el trabajo del bono escolar para poder construir más salones en la escuela Miller y poder responder a esa necesidad. Um, okay, so now that you see all the pieces that we have, I want to ask you, do you have any questions about the process, any questions for the whole group? And then we will also continue answering questions at the maps that are more specific to the uh, schools or the areas, but are there any questions for the whole group? Hay alguna pregunta para todo el grupo que podamos contestar y después vamos a contestar más preguntas en las áreas, pero quería um, ver si hay algunas preguntas. Yes. Yes, thank you. That's a great question. And yes, um, part of the work that Flo has done is they are able to tell us how many students are receiving uh, language services in this area. And when we make changes, how many students are going to be going to the other area. Um, and we were trying to always maintain the same level of service or if we were going to increase it, not increase it by much, and if we're going to increase it, we need to respond to that need. So that was something that was considered also poverty levels of schools. Um, we also were looking into um, not changing schools dramatically um, in that. Um, eh, let, let me translate it real quick. La señora estaba preguntando si consideramos programas como los programas bilingües, como los programas de... Um, y, y también la, el nivel de pobreza de las escuelas y si sí los consideramos de hecho el equipo de Flow puede hacer esa, ese cálculo y nos decía cuántos niños en tal escuela podrían recibir servicios y luego cuántos podíamos mover sin mover muchísimo los porcentajes de una escuela a otra y también miramos en no cambiar las escuelas dramáticamente y no cambiar los servicios en las escuelas dramáticamente I'll take your question, she was second and then I'll come back to you yeah. Okay. Across Highway 22. Okay. So why are all of those kids? It would make sense to send them to South, and my daughter in the one school in South, rather than you have now. You have going to South Salem by according to this. Uh -huh. You have now. You have Four Corners and Iyer as well. They're all here. Why not take those two schools and leave them where they were, uh -huh. and uh -huh. they go to House and uh -huh. not make because it doesn't make any sense that you've got all these other kids. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. It doesn't quite make sense. I know that there was a lot of consideration um, to those big roads, and I can't tell you exactly the saddlebag apartments, and I wish I knew more information, but we can go to the maps and I can try to figure out uh, exactly what your concern is. Um, but I know there was a moment when Miller was going to south and Miller was going to north, and through many, many changes, this is where the, um, the team came back to. And again, trying to balance services, programs, uh, size of the school, possibility of building up a school. There are some schools that have no room to grow. 
and there are schools that have a little bit of room where we can build up more classrooms, and uh, so I think that all went into, into uh, that. Um, but again, I want to encourage you please to ask the question and then let's spend some time in the map so I can understand the, the street and then see if I participated in that. And I know Rachel here from FLOW can also help us understand some of those. Oh, just yeah. Just remember, these are all proposals, so we love your feedback. So thank you for asking those questions because this is not by any means a set in stone thing. Yes, so thank you for feedback. saying that. And, and about feedback, let me tell you, we had a meeting on November 11th, I want to say, and um, through that feedback we heard, we needed to do focus groups in schools, which were done, and then we needed to hear more feedback from the communi community, and that is happening. So, so that is really important to the team. Uh, la señora estaba preguntando, ella está en un área en donde hay unos apartamentos y no tiene mucho sentido que están cruzando una avenida muy grande. Entonces le estaba explicando que se tomaron muchísimas de esas cosas en consideración para que los niños no cruzaran áreas grandes. También consideramos escuelas que no se podían construir más porque están en un vecindario muy pequeñito y otras que tienen un poquito de área para poder construir clases. Así que hay muchísimas cosas que se consideraron y cambios que se consideraron e hicieron muchas veces. Y una de las señoras del Task Force, Erin, nos estaba diciendo que por favor recuerden que podemos hacer muchos cambios que podemos hacer algunos cambios todavía, que esto no está finalizado y que necesitamos que ustedes nos den sus opiniones. Okay, and I have a question here. Did you take into consideration, my daughter now attends North and she takes a 10 minute bus ride. Sending yeah. her to self to come be on the bus for 20 or more minutes with mm -hmm. ADHD and autism at the end of the day and that's going to throw her into chaos. Very hard, yes, yes. And I don't understand how mm -hmm. that, that is a better option yeah. to send her to self where it's going to, we are starting all over again, and yeah. they just don't see how that is going to be beneficial mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, to kids. Yeah. They've already made roots and friends yeah. as freshmen at North, yeah. and now you're going to say, nope, all that's gone, and now you have to go to South. Yes, yes. So I hear your frustration, and I know that these change will impact us personally, right? Every family will, will have some impact. Something that I, that I want to tell you, too, is that we know that we can't just uproot kids from classrooms and from schools and say, okay, starting September, you go here. So we, are, we have a plan in place to make sure that your daughter can stay at the school where she has those connections so you can apply for that uh, in-district transfer to be able to support closed. her to stay there. It's closed. It closed no. on December, oh. November 3rd, yes. 30th. Yes, it's so, fine. yeah, it's, it, it will be open in March. It will be open in March. We will have a process in place yeah, we'll to make have sure that plans for those high school students. Yes, we will have continuity plans for all the high school for all the kids in every school, so that you can be grandfathered in for the changes, and they can stay in the schools where they are and where they feel connected to. Yeah, uh, uh, let, uh, let me translate it real quick. La señora estaba preguntando y estaba uh, está uh, molesta porque su hija recibe servicios y está en la escuela North, está en noveno grado y ella no quiere cambiarse de escuela y ahorita se tiene que ir para South donde no tiene amigos y no tiene conexiones, pero nosotros vamos, sabemos que este, este cambio es muy difícil y es muy personal y todos vamos a tener algún impacto personal, así que nosotros vamos a hacer un uh, plan para poder que las familias que están en las escuelas en este momento se puedan quedar en las escuelas um, bajo un servicio de continuidad para que puedan terminar eh, sus años, si están en tercero pueden terminar hasta quinto, si están en el high school pueden terminar el resto de high school. Ok, I had her first and then back and then I'll come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. And we hear you, and they're, it, your child's in. Right. Mm -hmm. So we know it doesn't make sense to pull a student who's a freshman, a sophomore, a junior out of their school to go to a different school to finish. And no, 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 you're not going. You're not going. You won't need to file an IDT. You'll be able to continue to graduate out of that high school. 
No, no, you will have transportation. All of your services will remain the same. No transportation for the for for, oh, for, okay. so so you'll be able to continue in your school and we're making plans on that these what you're looking at here today are long-term plans that aren't going to change what's going to happen um, immediately if you're already on a path particularly in high school with IEPs students with special needs um, so I want to make sure that we're not that we remove that concern right now Queremos asegurarnos que hay padres que están preocupados por el cambio de escuelas y este cambio no va a pasar de un año para otro, este cambio va a pasar con um, a tiempo para que ustedes puedan terminar en las escuelas en las que están. Hay, va a haber una pregunta acerca del transporte, si ustedes tienen que llevar sus niños de una escuela a otra y vamos a poder conversar acerca de eso um, y tener respuestas claras para ustedes. Um, ¿Qué más? Uh, en, uh, sabemos que son cambios muy difíciles y que son cambios que estamos pidiendo a las familias, pero otra vez es algo que se necesita por la situación en la que tenemos a muchas de nuestras escuelas. Yes. So, any other questions about the process, and then if you have individual questions about areas or schools or individualized plans, we can talk to uh, talk about those individually. Yeah. Starting the changes in September, so what uh -huh. I understood. Yes. And then my other question is, I have also uh, my child with IEP, and I know he's barely in middle school, but like you said, the changes are not going to be for this following year. Uh -huh. So is he going to be able to stay in the school that uh -huh. he belongs? And my other question is, um, you were talking about the proposal. This is just the proposal, but how are you guys going to uh, get for the final? Is mm -hmm. it just going to be the community, or are we going to vote, or is just the board of the school that is going to vote? It's the, the school board, yeah. yeah. Um, so, let's uh, well, the questions. So, uh, the changes are going to start being in effect in September of 2019. That means that if a family wants to go to the new school, they can go to that new school, and that school will be their school. It also means that we are not going to ask you to make that change in September if you don't want to make that change in September. If your students have friends and it doesn't make sense, or if they're a senior, it doesn't make sense to have them end their last year at a school, you know, uh, a few streets away or whatever it is. So we know that and there's going to be a continuity exception where you can say, uh, you made this change for me, but I want my son to stay at this school. And so they will stay at that school. Um, uh, not for the continuity, except uh, their paperwork that they have to fill out for that. We'll have to work through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll have guidance on, the, on all the families that are making those changes, and then we'll tell you exactly what you need to do. But we have your names. We have the names of people that are changing schools, and we will support you through that, everybody from elementary to high school. Because again, we did this because we had to do it, because we have to respond to a need, but we are committed to your children. We want to protect your kids, and we want to help them through these changes. Um, la señora, eh, algo que les queríamos decir es que va a haber un proceso para los cambios. Si sus estudiantes están en el último año de, de la preparatoria, no les vamos a cambiar, a, a pedir que cambien. En septiembre del 2019 es cuando van a empezar estos cambios. Así que si usted está en una escuela y usted se quiere quedar en esa escuela, usted puede participar en ese, en ese permiso que se les va a dar. Pero si usted quiere ir a otra escuela, que es la escuela nueva que le estamos dando, usted puede también hacer ese cambio. Um, we know that this change will take from three to five years, and that is why all of those calculations are being done until 2027. Because we know there are going to be families that are going to take time to be able to move to the area where they will um, graduate from. Sabemos que estos cambios van a tomar de tres a cinco años y por eso vamos a tener todos esos planes y por eso con el, con el equipo de Flow estamos viendo hasta el 2027 para poder que les demos oportunidad a todas las familias de hacer los cambios. Ok, a couple more questions. I saw a hand back there. Yeah. Mm 
Yes. So that's a bond question. So Lillian, help me out with a bond <laughs> question. Thank you. I'm getting my steps in. Um, <laughs> So that's a great question. We are essentially building an entire high school by adding on to all of the existing high schools. Um, and that comes from the Community Bond Oversight Committee who, who said that they wanted that. They wanted their children to continue going through those same high school feeder patterns. And so we knew that, that we needed to expand our schools and if it meant expanding our current schools um, to address that capacity, then that would be the approach that we would do. I think long term, um, you've got one of our future clients there. Um, <laughs> You're going to see uh, a new high school in the Salem area in your child's time. However, it's not included in this bond measure. Um, what is included in this bond measure are special education spaces at each of those high schools. We've got career technical education spaces at each of those high schools. We've got science labs for middle schools. So we have some really great forward thinking, um, pro uh, hands-on education spaces that are going to be built with this bond. But long term, you know, I, you're hitting the nail on the head and we may recruit you to be on the next bond oversight committee. <laughs> Thank you. Stay here. Stay with me. <laughs> uh, estaba diciendo la señora que ella tiene un cliente del futuro del distrito um, y que nosotros pensamos muchísimo en poder construir una escuela, pero que la realidad es que es como si fuéramos a construir una escuela porque todas uh, las preparatorias van a tener aumentos de tecnología, salones de ciencias, muchísimos salones que se van a aumentar y no podíamos solamente gastarlo o, o, o poner todos los esfuerzos en construir una sola eh, preparatoria, necesitábamos hacer muchísimos cambios en todas las demás. La señora también estaba diciendo, puede ser que en la vida de este nuevo clientecito que tenemos aquí haya un cambio y otro bono escolar en el que podamos construir otra preparatoria, pero que en este momento con este bono escolar no vamos a poder hacer eso. There was a question right there. Yes. So the question is about McKay and its growth pattern and why and and will it become more crowded before we can get a solution in place. Mm -hmm. um, McKay is a, a, does anyone know how many students McKay was built for? 25. Oh girl, I wish. No. Nope. 1,700. Yeah. 1700. So we know we have a really significant issue. So what you're looking at are those existing numbers mm -hmm. is the 2700. Um, but the task force proposal four on the right, those are those numbers that we're looking to get to. So with this proposal in 2022, McKay would actually be 112 students under capacity with the additions that we're building at the school. So, so and I would imagine that most students would want to So here's here's kind of how it works. Say um, at your address you decide your student is a sophomore. You decide um, that you're going to move to a different address still in the McKay feeder system. Your child's gonna go to McKay, but that address, if it's on one of those places that's being moved out, the next occupants would become the McKay uh, attendee. So it's not going, these things are really complicated and we know that it's not just you, you're taking out an entire chunk of population and relocating it. It is an attrition based um, plan and Rachel, Rachel's over there nodding her head yes. She is our consultant who is 
doing all the population planning. And um, we love to call her on nights and weekends with questions just like these. So I would encourage you to go and talk to her. She's very friendly. Um, and she will help answer all of those questions for you. And then something else that I wanted to mention is there are a lot of families that do want to um, move to the other high school because they know this is a long term. And so we have heard both. We have heard people that say, I want to stay. And we have heard people that say, I want to finish where they're going to um, uh, finish and where my other kids are going to come. So I'm going to make this change right in September of 2019. And Superintendent Perry, did you want to add something to that? That transition year, so ninth grade, the continuity it, are for kids who have started in a school. We don't want to take them out, but as you transition, so in, in theory, next year, the ninth grade class at McKay should be a lot smaller than, so that's, it's, it's both of them. It's some of the kids will go, but the ninth grade class, just like uh, in all of our elementary schools, the ones that are real, really have a lot of kids in them, the kinder class should be smaller so you'll you'll see some immediate relief and then over time relief mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you um, la señora estaba preguntando qué vamos a hacer con las escuelas que van a estar llenas con 500 niños más el año que viene porque se, algunos padres pueden decir que se van a quedar en el en esa escuela y um, Lilian les estaba diciendo que hay muchos um, proyecciones que se, de los que se ha encargado Flow para indicar cuántas familias pueden hacer eso, cuántas familias están interesadas en hacer eso, cuántas familias van a venir, la superintendente nos estaba diciendo hay familias que van a entrar en noveno grado y esas familias van a tener la expectativa de ir a la nueva escuela o las familias que están en kinder, que vienen al kinder, van a tener la expectativa de venir a la nueva escuela. No tiene sentido de que empiecen en una escuela en la que no van a terminar. Ok, ya. Yeah. Yes, yes. So your question, let me, let me say it again, see if I got it. You have three kids two years apart that go to different schools, and through these changes, you're going to have kids going to possibly, possibly to different areas, to two different feeder areas, right? And so there's going to be a moment when, I, when you have to make that decision, when you're going to have to say, okay, I'm going to move. It makes sense now to make all of my students to this feeder area, um, and we'll just um, have to have those conversations. Again, these are more individual problem solving that we can do through schools and then through um, just having closer conversations just about your family. Um, la señora estaba preguntando, ella tiene tres hijos, dos años cada niño eh, separado por dos años más o menos, y está preguntando, entonces mis hijos van a terminar en dos eh, escuelas, en dos eh, eh, preparatorias, y la realidad es que va a llegar un momento en el que ella tiene que hacer una decisión de cuál de las dos escoger, en la que se va a poder quedar en algunas escuelas por un tiempo, pero luego va a tener que decidir a cuál hacer, y no queremos irnos a estas preguntas más individualizadas, porque ya estaríamos hablando familia por familia. Entonces necesitamos hablar más acerca del proceso. So again, if you have any other questions about process, please let us know. We're going to be here and we're going to be available for questions, but we want to invite you to come to the maps with us so we can uh, continue the conversation there about the specific schools. And Lillian? Sorry, I'm <laughs> Um, so again, these are just proposals. These are not final. These are opportunities for you to provide feedback for us. What will happen, so next steps, um, our committee, our, bound, our boundary adjustment committee, again, raise your hand so people know who to um, share concerns with and, and walk through the process with. Um, 
So those are going to be some really helpful resources for you to understand how we got to where we are. But then it goes to the board. The board votes on it. Um, so there's still time for these to change. And, and what affects that change is your feedback. Mm -hmm. And then once the board votes on it, then we begin communicate, the school district will communicate with every single person individually to let them know the impact. So if you have students at three different schools, who are two years apart, you'll get information that's related specifically to those students that helps you carve the path forward so that you can make the best decisions for your family. Maybe that means students at three different schools. Maybe it means working to get those students into the same schools. Um, and, and so that's going to be the opportunity for you. But, um, but we will work on a one-by-one -one individual basis. You'll get that communications tailored to your child. Eh, nos estamos entonces ya preparando para ir a los mapas. Queríamos decirles, y le fue una pregunta que hizo la señora que se me había olvidado contestarle, y es del proceso. ¿Qué pasa ahorita después de esta presentación? Y después de esta presentación nosotros vamos a recibir su retroalimentación, toda la información que ustedes nos van a dejar, las preguntas, las sugerencias, y de ahí esto va a ir al comité para que ellos las revisen, hagan cambios, y luego la presenten a la mesa directiva o al distrito escolar para que ellos hagan los, uh, las decisiones finales, los miembros de la mesa directiva. Entonces, ahí vamos a poder también informarle a cada familia, después de que todos los cambios um, estén decididos, todas las familias van a recibir una llamada o van a recibir información acerca de cuál es la escuela a la que van a ir, cómo va a ser el cambio y también vamos a poderlos apoyar con uh, información acerca de eh, sería una buena idea ir a esta escuela por dos años y después irse para otra escuela por otros dos años. Así que ese, ese, esa clase de conversaciones las podemos tener individualmente con las escuelas, con los directores o con los maestros de las escuelas. Ok. Oh, you have... Increasing the cap. They count, it says that, you know, they're over, the percentage of cap is at 105%. And that can be you know, at 100%. Okay, let me find how. It's still in the works. So the question was about how. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Say it all again. So the, I the can. Internet can hear. Okay. So right now, that's part of Miller's issue. So Miller's over capacity by over 100. And so we're, we're working on dropping Miller, which hopefully dropped that down at Hauk as well. So we're still in the works there. This is just the most recent numbers you have. So nothing set in stone yet. And so his questions around the projections, and that's, that's when we turn things over to the bond oversight committee who's in charge of the dollars and the projects, and maybe they build a little bit more capacity out of school, which is also an option. Um, we have, sure, sure, but we, um, we have those, the flexibility with those bond dollars um, to add on one or two classrooms if it makes space and it alleviates that overcrowding. Yeah. Um, el señor estaba preguntando que en el papel ahorita está viendo que en la escuela Hawk van a tener capacidad por encima de lo que pueden hacer y una de nuestros miembros, Erin, una de nuestros miembros de la, del equipo dijo que eso es una revisión que se hizo, toda, que todavía está pendiente y es que tenemos niños a sobre capacidad en la escuela Miller que van a Hawk, entonces eso está poniendo a las dos escuelas un poquito sobre capacidad. Y también la señora Lilian estaba diciéndonos que nosotros tenemos que llevar esta conversación también al equipo del bono escolar porque ellos pueden ahí tomar decisiones, ellos tienen los fondos para tomar decisiones acerca de qué clase de cambios podemos hacer en la escuela Miller y qué clase de cambios podemos hacer en la escuela Hawk para construir, para poder que podamos construir más espacio para los niños. There's a question back there.
So the question is around transportation and continuity. So here's, here's where it, it really becomes an individual thing. So when you have students with special needs, then things change. Excuse me? Doesn't have special needs. So that's going to be one of those situations where you're going to get the information that's relevant to your child and have to make that decision for yourself. Not all students. That's correct. Right. And so, again, we're getting to a point of finality where the purpose for tonight is to look at these and make sure that they make the right sense. Um, and so there, there are going to be questions that are individual to each family that need to be addressed, and, and we will continue to work on that along the way. But it, I don't want to speak with any finality tonight about people's individual children and what it does or does not mean for them. Um, la señora estaba preguntando atrás que ella había llamado a la escuela, al distrito, y le habían dicho que si ella cambiaba a su hija de una escuela a otra, ella tenía que proveer el transporte. Y la realidad es que si vamos a tener que hacer eso, los padres van a tener que proveer el transporte, pero hay muchas cosas que todavía no se han finalizado y todavía no sabemos si esto va a ser la última decisión y cuáles son los apoyos que se van a poder proveer. Entonces, um, ahorita no podemos hablar de cambios individuales, de que si mi hijo puede recibir bus en tal escuela o tal otra, porque nosotros no tenemos la decisión final todavía. Esto es simplemente lo que tenemos en la propuesta en este momento. Ya. Yeah. To spray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So she was asking, uh, she came to a meeting at conferences or during conference time, and there was a proposal about sending students from Four Corners and Miller, and Air, sorry, to Sprague High School instead of South. And so, yes, that was part of a, 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 a um, conversation that was happening at the task force. Again, that is a great example of community conversation and community feedback because what we heard is parents don't want to have their kids go so far um, away from their neighborhood. And um, we want parents to be able to access after school sports, after school activities. And a lot of families don't have transportation. So we didn't want to, the task force didn't want to um, uh, continue with that conversation. And so that quickly went to south. So thank you for asking. Yeah, that um, it was a conversation that had started, but then it's going to south. Uh -huh. um, eh, la señora estaba preguntando que ella en una reunión a la que vino durante las conferencias escuchó que había una decisión que se había tomado de que los estudiantes de Four Corners y Mary Air fueran a la escuela Sprague. Y ese es un buen ejemplo acerca de la retroalimentación que recibimos de las familias, porque de hecho... Porque los padres dijeron, nosotros no queremos que los niños vayan tan lejos, queremos poder apoyarlos en las en las deportes después de la escuela, queremos ir al coro y, y no vamos a poder irnos hasta Sprague. Entonces, eso fue lo que escuchó el equipo bien fuerte e inmediatamente se hizo el cambio y no nunca fue una decisión, en, sino que era simplemente una conversación, pero inmediatamente se tomó la decisión de que fuera a South. Ok. <laughs> El señor dice bravo. Um, yeah. The only the only thing that I want to say, and I'm not talking about everybody, but just myself. Yeah. And um, what about when they change? Like, let's say, like my kids come to house and they go to um, South. Uh huh. But I'm not talking. I mean, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about general. There's some parents like. At the same time, I would think that the school district want the parents to be involved. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make another change, too, for the parents, that it's going to be more far for them mm -hmm. to go to 
parent meetings or after school events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, That's the mm -hmm. only concern that I have yeah. for parents. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I would say we know and we understand that these changes, there's no change that is going to be perfect. But we are responding again to a problem that we have in our hands right now. We have schools that are overcrowded and that is not good for kids. So there will be some of those changes and we'll have to adjust. And, but I know also, I, and I really believe in this, and if you guys know me, you know I say this with all my heart. I know we also are a very resilient and flexible community. And I know we will learn through the change and we will be okay and our kids will be okay. And we will make sure as a district that we are providing the right teachers and the right leadership and the right classrooms and the right supports so all of the schools can be successful. But I know, I hear you and I know that is, that is a reality. Mm -hmm. La señora estaba diciendo que ella eh, está simplemente hablando por ella y por otras personas diciendo que es muy difícil este cambio y que se van a perder conexiones en las escuelas y que se van a perder a, a padres que se sienten conectados en una escuela que pueden simplemente caminar a su escuela y yo sé que eso es una realidad, yo sé que eso es una realidad va a ser muy difícil para llegar pero también yo sé y si ustedes, he trabajado con muchos de ustedes hay muchas caras conocidas aquí y sé que somos una comunidad flexible y resistente y vamos a poder hacer este cambio y nuestros niños van a estar bien y el distrito se va a encargar de proveer los recursos necesarios, proveer los apoyos necesarios, los maestros y el liderazgo necesario para continuar adelante yeah. Yes. Yes, we will let you know that is a big concern right now. We see and you see in this chart that we have 135 kids over at Miller in this co Um, I think by December 11th or around that time of this month, we're hoping to have an update for Miller. Mm -hmm. But we know that it's an area that the task force is still working on. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I need to translate. Yeah. So, no, so the task force is taking the feedback from the meeting tonight. They're meeting next week, and they're going to review all of this data to inform the decision-making process, and then that will be communicated out to you. Um, the board does not vote on, on this until January. So once the task force uh, or the board doesn't get it until January. So once the task force completes their work, they'll hand it over to the board. And then is Paul Kylo still here? There's Paul Kylo. <laughs> so you can email him your input or your any other board director, your feedback on the proposal, because ultimately they'll have the final say. But we'll be, once the, the committee's done, we'll give that information to the parents so that you can be empowered and be part of this decision-making process and know all of your avenues for communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're good. Everyone. Everyone that is affected, everyone that has a child that is affected by a change will get information about it. Momentito, déjeme traducir. Uh, la señora estaba preguntando, hay un problema grave en Miller, en este momento lo podemos ver en el cuadro que dice que hay 135 niños sobre la capacidad de la escuela y eso es algo en el que el equipo está trabajando fuertemente. Ellos saben que esta es una situación que tenemos a la que tenemos que responder y uh, se van a tratar de traer soluciones y nosotros estamos esperando poder comunicar al equipo, a poder comunicar a la comunidad de Miller y a la comunidad de todas las personas que están afectadas, cuáles cambios van a estar presentes para ayudar. Y también que ustedes pueden mandar su, acuérdense, es importante que recibamos retroalimentación hoy y también que pueden mandar emails a los directores de la mesa directiva o al distrito para nosotros saber cuáles son sus preocupaciones. ¿Tenía una pregunta, señora? Oh, qué bien. Sí. Oh. Uh -huh. Quería agradecerles que tomaran en cuenta eso, que se escuchara nuestra voz. También quería, también tengo una, una inquietud, supongamos que ya todo esto está aprobado, uh -huh. que ya se llegó
va a haber alguien que hable con los estudiantes o nosotros como papás tenemos que decirles uh -huh. eso porque no estamos muy conformes que digamos. Uh -huh. Comprendemos que ustedes tienen tiempo ya contemplándolo, ustedes están viendo lo mejor por los niños, pero a nosotros nos cae de sorpresa. Uh -huh. yeah. Al llevárselo nosotros a los niños se los vamos a llevar en nuestro sentir. Pero a mí me gustaría que, o, o saber ya desde ahorita, si cuando si se aprueba esto y ya se aprueba, alguien va a hablar con los niños. Claro. Uh -huh. Los chiquitos lo ven de una forma, pero los que ya están más grandecitos lo van a ver de, de otra, otra forma. Uh -huh. y, y quisiera que alguien se los dijera uh -huh. en palabras que ellos puedan entender mejor. ¿sí? Claro que sí. Ok, muchas gracias por esa sugerencia. Si la puede escribir, déjeme la traduzco y también le doy oportunidad a la señora de comunicaciones que nos responda. Um, she was saying, she wanted to do, say two things. Things. One is she wanted to thank the uh, task force for the um, um, open process that they had where they invited parents. She was part of the group that came here and said, please don't send my student to Sprague. I want to stay in the community. I want to come closer. I know I understand there is a need. I understand there needs to be a change. And so she feels that her voice was uh, heard and her voice was respected and she uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the to the task force um, and she also is asking for support and so this is uh, also, I told her I would tell Lillian and Lillian is going to help us with that because that's a really good point she's saying can the district help us communicate with our kids so it's not just us as parents so teachers and principals and communication department can help kids understand we have a change and there's a reason for this change and we are going to support you through this change. So that's a really good, um, we will have those conversations with our students, um, but thank you for um, sharing that that is very, very important to you. Sí, señora. Sí. Claro. Sí. Sí, señora. Las distancias están, la señora estaba diciendo, ustedes han considerado las distancias porque dejamos los niños con la señora que lo cuida y la señora no maneja. Todo eso se ha considerado y otra vez las decisiones muchas van a ser muy difíciles, pero pero todo eso se ha considerado. So she was saying, have you considered, or she wants to make sure that we hear again loud and clear that we need to consider the distance, that we have families that leave kids with a child care provider that may not be a driver um, and or may not have a car, and then maybe the child gets sick at school and that provider has to go pick them up. So So, um, and yes, we have considered one of the things that uh, was, again, key, one of those principles that the superintendent gave us was we needed to try to conserve neighborhood schools. So that is something that was taken in consideration, yes. Okay. Oh, sí, señora. Sí. Y ella tiene niños chiquitos, este, sí maneja, podría tal vez irlos a dejar, pero le es difícil a ella también. Montar todos y los niños al carro. también uh -huh. porque los dos trabajamos yeah. y ellas ya están acostumbradas a ella. Uh -huh. O sea, ellas quieren mucho a la muchacha. Uh -huh. um, para mí sí es difícil en la transportación, en dado caso que se hiciera el cambio. Sí. Es difícil porque lo que he estado escuchando tal vez no haya transportación y uh -huh. tendremos que llevarlos. Yeah. Entonces, a lo mejor ella sí las llevaría. Uh -huh. También nos costaría un extra a nosotros en cuestión de económicamente. Claro. En mi caso, ellas, las dos me padecen de asma. Uh -huh. Entonces, a ellas sí les beneficia la transportación porque no es lo mismo estar un ratito esperando el paso, decir, uh -huh. Uh -huh. a lo mejor caminar. Uh -huh. o cosas así, o tal vez pienso que muchos les pasa lo mismo sí. y ella también está cerca donde yo vivo y cerca de la escuela también nos Dios. beneficia en este caso nosotros si ellas llegaran a cambiarse también para ellas sería muy difícil 
porque al menos la más grandecita me dijo que ella no se cambia de no aquí, se no quiere ir, ir. ya yeah. claro que sí yo okay no quiero ir. sí yo sí no quiero estar. Uh -huh. la más chiquita pues todavía, todavía se cambia ya 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 so um, So, um, sabemos que hay todos esos cambios y todo eso se está teniendo en consideración, el transporte, qué tan lejos son las escuelas. So, she just wanted to um, uh, say again uh, that it's hard when you have childcare and when your kids are used to that childcare provider and they can't drive and they, um, and they can't take the, the kids and they have little ones and they have to put little ones in the car also if they drive. So, um, there will be, again, we are considering distance and we want to make maintain neighborhood schools, but there are going to be situations where that is not going to be possible and so we'll respond to those individual needs. So, I feel like we're going to more individualized questions. Um, so, I will be happy and I know task force members or staff members are happy. Superintendent, Director Kylo, we're all here available. Please, let's go to the map and then we can have conversations and really talk about the areas. Padres, uh, sé que eh, tienen preguntas más individualizadas, así que vamos a los mapas y entonces allá podemos conversar un poquito más acerca del cambio. I want to thank you for coming and then let's continue the conversation, but we appreciate your participation. Muchas gracias por venir, apreciamos muchísimo su participación y su voz. Gracias por escucharnos también. Gracias, señor. Gracias. Gracias. Erin, are you dancing with me? We're moving things to the left, to the left, to the left, and moving things to the right, to the right.